is that I have a plan for Brent to take him from good to great. He doesn't know what that plan is, so he's seeing it right now for the first time. Okay? So, how are you? <laughs> um, so, what, what I thought about as I was trying to create, you know, this year's information that would be uh, unique is I said, well, let's just take you as a coach and what are you going to try to do? Because you got a great player here that, you know, needs to be the best that he possibly can be. So how do I take him from being a good player to being a great player? So this is my plan with him. So I thought this might be something that you guys would be interested in today. Okay, number one is that be healthy, be strong, be in great physical shape. Well, that seems, that seems common sense, right? Well, Coach Franklin, you really are brilliant. You figured that out. Well, he's had injuries the last two years. So what can he do in the off season to make himself more healthy? Well, I've told him a couple of things. I've told him about studying um, Drew Brees because if you think about it, Brent and Drew Brees are really similar. You want to find guys that are kind of similar to you. They're almost the same size. You know, Drew Brees might have him by that much. They've got the same toughness, you know, the same, you know, look in their face like I might poke your eyes out and stuff. And then Drew Brees went through a horrible injury. He went through a horrible injury. He had the same surgeon that he had, Dr. Andrews, the best surgeon in the world, okay? So now Drew Brees has a workout plan that Brent's been able to go online and been able to look at the workout plan that Drew Brees has. So adjust your workout some. I think quarterbacks are different. I know Coach Hatcher probably thinks they are too. Brent's always been the tough guy. You know, I want to be like everybody else. I want to outwork everybody. If I go in the weight room and those DBs are in there, I'm going to outwork those fuckers. If the old lines are in there, I'm going to outwork those guys. Well, outworking them is great, but are you doing it smart? Are you doing what you need to do as a quarterback so that your arm can throw 250 times a day? Are you doing that part of the workout? Or are you doing stuff to where you, you know, I want to look good. You know, I want to make sure that all the women like me like they do me. I mean, I'm a hard one for him to follow because he wants to look like I do. But not just being strong, but being healthy. Being healthy as a quarterback. So I want him to study that, and I want him to do that more in the offseason. I want him to be smart with training and to train with the greats. I'd like for him to study. I just read all this stuff about Tom Brady and the and the uh, controversy going on in New England right now, if you guys have read about that, where Tom has his own guy, you know, and the guy, they've started their own health line, their own health, health products deal, and there's controversy because in the NFL, they want to control everything, and Brady's got his own little deal, and some of the other guys are looking and going, okay, Brady's 40 years old, the healthiest guy in the NFL, says he's going to play till he's 45, he's doing something right, right? And in the NFL, they test him for steroids, is more important than being tested positive for cocaine. So we know that what he's doing and putting into his body and all that stuff is legal. So what is it? Okay, I don't know. I haven't studied it enough, but I want him to study it right now. I want him to figure it out. Study the greats. What did they do to play for a long time? How did they stay healthy? Well, the one thing I know, he's a tough fucker. So when he breaks an open field, you'll see it. I love it. I love his fucking toughness. I love him looking fuckers up and hitting them in the throat. But you know what I like more? I like him being healthy. <laughs> so I want him to learn to fucking slide, okay? You know, his idea of sliding is left forearm to the throat, you know, and then sliding after I fucking hit you, which, again, I love it, but I want him healthy. I want to play a whole season with him one time. Improve the velocity of his throws. And, and again, that was the Drew Brees deal. I saw Kobe Cameron when we were in, at uh, Louisiana Tech do this training that Drew Brees had just started to put out, and I saw Kobe's velocity of the football dramatically change. Okay, And Brent can probably tell you because I know he's found some of this stuff online. If I was a great coach, I would already have it myself, but I don't. Okay, So I'm having him do it himself. Become more accurate. I think he'd become more accurate if he improves his velocity a little bit. I think that his percentages will jump way up. Develop chemistry with receivers and demand their appearance in the offseason. Now, how do you do that? You demand it with a smile on your face. You demand it to where that if my guy that I know should be our starting X, that if he doesn't show up, then what I do is that I go, hey, you know, I missed you yesterday. You know, tough, 
uh, you know, sorry you weren't there because your fucking backup is going to beat your fucking ass out. Because I'm going to make sure he fucking does, motherfucker. Okay? That's good leadership, right? Positive leadership, right? Very positive with a smile on his face. He's got a smile. Cock said, you fucking dropped six fucking touchdowns for me, asshole. So fucking please be there tomorrow, motherfucker. Okay? <laughs> In a positive way. With a smile on your face, right? That's positive leadership. Demand their appearance that they come. Develop go-to routes with undeniable chemistry. Okay, who do I go to? What do I do? He knows who he's going to. He was going to Richie James, right? Richie James is maybe the best receiver I've ever coached going into this past season. The problem was he only played three games. Why? Because he got hurt. So now who's the chemistry with next? How do you develop chemistry? You develop it in the off season. You develop with individual stuff. I used I work out of the press box. If you guys know that, uh, every time I usually go to a place, I end up in a private location because nobody fucking likes me. So I'm up in the press box, and I can see Brent in the summer. Who did I see him out there throwing with in the summer? If he's throwing, usually with Richie James. They got this incredible chemistry. The problem is Richie got hurt. So now who do you have it with? He needs it with three or four or five guys that he can develop it with, and those become his guys. And you develop that in the offseason. Become a great runner with creative eyes and imagination. When I first got here, Brent was a below-average runner, okay? He was not a great runner. He wasn't even a good runner. He was a guy that would run and, and fall, get his body going too far forward and fall. So I asked him to be more creative with his eyes, to use better imagination as a runner, all right? And he did. And then um, the, um, the first season I was here, he became an almost average runner. This past season, he was a fucking good runner until he got hurt, okay? How did he do it? By being creative. You're creative as a runner with your eyes, all right? A lot of times runners, because I, I was a running back and I was really shitty, and I believe I was really shitty even though I was a college running back and I started at Murray State, you know, Hamilton, if I was there for you right now, I mean, y'all averaged about 2.8 per carry this year. I could have got you to 2.9, okay? I mean, because that's what I averaged in my career as a college runner was 2.9 per carry. But all I did was run hard, eh, grunt and groan and try to be tough, and I fucking saw nothing with my eyes. And so with a running back and a running quarterback, is to be creative with your eyes. Learn the blocking schemes, which he understands the blocking schemes. Understand how everything develops. Understand what the feels are from the defense. And then be creative when you run the ball with your eyes. Have creative eyes and imagination as a runner. And then, like I said, for him, also now learn how to know when the journey's over and how to get down. Develop incredible hand strength. I have horrible hand strength. You know, there's women that shake my hand and fucking crumble me, okay? Because I don't have gigantic hands and people shake my hand and I try to get firm and I try to get that. But I know that you can develop really good hand strength with all the deals that we do. And I know in the weight room we have the stuff that, you know, the rice and where you do all that stuff. But I want him to have the best hand strength because if you have great hand strength, you can grip a ball better and you don't have to worry about it. And he does a good job with that, but I want it to become better. All right? Study your past and embrace your success and destroy your weaknesses. Okay? Study your film. <clears throat> have your highlight. Have your highlight film to where that you watch yourself making great plays. You watch yourself making the average play. Make his own cut-ups. He knows how to do it. Make his own film. And then show himself to where that he embraces those strengths. Why am I good at this? Why did this work? What can I do? How can I, with these two new quarterbacks be coming in, how can I get them up to speed as soon as they get here to make them as good as they possibly can be? Embrace the strengths and also look at himself and go, what, what, do I, what did I suck at? You know, what was I bad at? And make the film of that and become, you know, become better at those things. Also become the master of tags. I've tagged for him for two years. He needs to begin to tag for himself. The word that I call a concept, and he looks up, sees it immediately, and looks out and gives somebody something that's better than what I called. Okay? Because on the third season, I don't know if Hatcher, I'm sure he would say the same thing. Every quarterback I've had in the third season, that's when the tags become, you become better than me. I can't tag as good as you can. 
I can give you something, but you're always going to see it better than I do. And I've only you know, coached one quarterback in my career for three seasons, and that was Jared. And Jared in his third season became much, much better at being creative in his tags, being able to tag run play, RPOs, being able to tag the backside of quick game routes to where I don't have to do it, to where that they can do it. So become the master at tags. Read, study, and improve leadership skills. There's a million things out there about leadership. Find something that you like, something that you believe in. I, I study business. I don't study many football guys. I study business. And the reason I study business is because obviously I have a business. But what I found over the years, <clears throat> the football stuff is a lot about quotations. It's a lot about slogans. It's a lot about, you know, roll the fucking boat, right? You know, stuff like that. It's all good. You know, slang is great. You know, it gets, gets guys good jobs and all that stuff. But I like business because there's not very many slogans. Is that there's a whole lot of doing. There's a whole lot of creative innovation of doing things that have never been done before and finding ways that, that fit you. And so I believe that if you find that and you study that, I study, I I, I almost every day listen to um, podcasts when I'm walking. And one of the ones that I listen to that if you guys haven't done this is a guy named Tim Ferriss. Okay, F-E-R-R-I-S, I think it's just one S. And he's, he's a young guy, but he's really, he's done a whole lot of stuff with health and with body functions and, and with eating and, and all that stuff. And he, he wrote a book called The 4-Hour Work Week. And it's basically how not to waste time. And that's a, I'm a huge believer in not wasting time. I, ha I hate wasting time. For example, if we have a meeting and I got to listen to the old line coach say, you know, well, Johnny didn't step with the left foot right here. He didn't get this on. I've been coaching with the guy for three fucking years. I know Johnny didn't do that. To me, that's a waste of my time and a waste of his time just so that we can do stuff. So once, <clears throat> once my coaches and we are on the same page, then I don't, Meet just to be meeting because I don't want to waste time. And that's part of the four-hour work week is learning how. How can you maximize your skill set? How can you maximize your practice time without doing things just to be doing them? Because I hate to do that. So find guys that you can study. Don't show signs of weakness by being too self-critical. He's the worst in the world. And I motherfucked him for probably the first time when he came back from his injury. Because what he does is that... You know, we'll be doing routes on air and he'll make a shitty throw and he'll motherfuck himself unbelievably. Well, that's good because what is he doing? He's fixing himself. But what he's also doing is spreading negative energy around. I do enough negative energy that he don't really need a whole lot of it, okay? I've got enough of it going. He doesn't need to be as self-critical verbally to where that, that energy spreads throughout the other guys because sometimes they feel like it's coming towards them. And when you've got young quarterbacks, sometimes it hurts them a little bit. Daily gratitude. He does a really good job with this. I believe that you teach your teammates how to be grateful <clears throat> and that you are grateful. If you guys don't have this app on your phone, I would strongly recommend that the first break that you get is that you put an app on your phone called the 5-Minute Journal. The 5-Minute Journal has changed my life. It's on the front page of my iPhone right here. And the first thing I do when I wake up and shit every morning, if I'm sitting on the shitter, Unlike Trump that's trying to destroy the fucking world on the shitter, I'm trying to read the five-minute journal, and it takes me literally about three minutes in the morning and two minutes at night for me to set my daily attitude of gratitude because the number one thing in the world that makes you have a good day is being grateful. So the five-minute journal is very simple. I start off the day, and I list three things that I'm grateful for. It can be the same thing as yesterday. It can be as simple as... You know, this morning, I'm grateful I get to see David Barnes. You know, that's in my journal from this morning. My best friend from high school, and I get to see him today. Okay, I get to see Chris Hatcher. And, you know, Hatcher and I have gotten closer over the last couple of years. I get to see good friends. Whatever it is, I'm grateful for, the, for, for my daughter, you know, for all three of my kids. It doesn't matter what it is, but when you set the tone of being grateful, what it does is it, it makes you not have a shitty day because you have gratitude. So he can be grateful, but he can also teach everybody else. And I tell our players all the time this stuff. I spend, you know, 20% of my time trying to teach them how to be, have better lives. Uh, take snaps and drops and pops and rolls and slide fires and flames and boots daily. He can do all that on his own.
Okay, what's a drop? Well, a three-step drop, a five-step drop. What's a slide? Slide protection to where he's faking here, coming off of it and have to go through his progression. Rollout, boots, every little thing that he does, he can have a rhythm set up that if I don't set it up for him, he's got it set up for himself. And it could be that he's got five minutes free and all of a sudden he just says, you know what, I'm going to get better at rolling out to my left because it's usually easier to throw to the right for a left-hander than it is to throw to the left. Demand excellent for yourself and your teammates, okay? He does that, all right? But demand it not only for himself, but demand it also for his teammates as a leader. Make everyone better with positive, firm leadership. And again, some, you know, it's amazing, and I'm bad at this, I know this. I've got really, when I'm fucking, when I'm pissed and I don't feel good about something, my body shows it usually. You know, I can walk into a room and people go, oh, fuck, all right, you know, something ain't right. I'm not great about hiding that body language part of it. But if you, if you ever notice that there's some people that feel, smile, are positive all the time, and they could look you right in the eye and they could go, you know, Colby, you're fucking, you're a sorry motherfucker. <laughs> you really are. I don't fucking like you. But, you know, you're also ugly, okay? And they finish telling you all this, and you go, wow, you know, I love fucking Colby, you know? Or it could be, you know, you're fucking great coach, Colby, God damn it, motherfucker. You fucking, you know, I really fucking like you. You're fucking really good, you know? Body language means something. It's like, did he just fucking compliment me? I don't fucking, I don't know if it was or if it wasn't. So body language does make a difference, and with, and, and with body language, you can have better leadership. Meditate, okay? If you're not doing that, start it. All right? Meditation, and this is the one thing, it's hard, man. Because, man, when you sit in silence and do it, I do headspace. Headspace is 10 minutes. It's an app, again. And again, why did I choose headspace? Because it's easy. Because that's what Tim Ferriss used. And then he's gone more into the transcendental meditation now. Um, but the reason that I know that Brent should do meditation is because 80% of the world's leaders in business that are killing it in, in the world are meditating. And almost all of the people that I admire in the world that do great things meditate. They start their day to where that somewhere during the day, some of them do it more than once, is they go to a quiet space and they turn everything in the world off and they have a focused meditation. And usually it involves sometimes self-talk. Sometimes it's mantras. But if 80% of the top leaders in the world that are changing our world for the better are doing this, there's got to be something to it. There's got to be something positive. So if Brent wants to be the best guy in the world, he needs to do that. Look for and find missing keys of defenders and defenses that we missed during the season on film study. I am not a great skiing coach, and he knows that. <clears throat> So in the off-season, what he can do is take a game film, watch a game film, make notes and go, wow, this is what they did that I missed during the game. How did I miss that during film study? What did I not do during film study that I missed that? Coach Franklin missed it. Everybody in the room missed this. It would make me a better football player. He can do that in the off-season and become a better, uh, be more prepared as we start off. Reach out and find teammates that we need to rise up and become their mentor, lead them to the promised land. You're in college football. You got 120 kids in a, in, in a room in a deal. We got some lost souls now. I mean, there ain't no fucking doubt. We got some lost souls. We got guys in, 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 in our room that are in trouble. You know, Steve Ellis is in the back of the room back there. Steve Ellis was coaching DBs when I was here in 2009. Uh, he's a great, he was a great coach in 09, but he's a thousand times better. And I told him this. I told him this the last two years I've been here. He's a thousand times better football coach than he was in 2009. But one of the things he does a great job of is mentoring young men, okay, saving young men, going and finding them in the deepest, darkest place in life and really doing a good job of bringing them out. I think Brent can do that. I think that he can do a better job of finding guys that are in trouble. And sometimes we don't want to, you know, we don't want to do it because it's uncomfortable because, you know, you got a guy that's, you know, got a dope problem or you got a guy that's, you know, going out and getting, you know, hammered too much or you got a guy that's being abusive 
in some way in a relationship with a female or something that you can, you can play a positive role in their life, that's something that he can do a little bit more. Recognize coverages and their weaknesses through film study like I talked about a while ago. Make a scouting report of our opponents for next season on what you believe their weaknesses are. Make my job easier. Come in and say, be a better part of the game plan. A lot of times I'll ask him, I'll say, what do you like? What do you want? He'll go, coach, whatever you like. I don't want to hear that. I want to know what you fucking like. I want to know that, you know what, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I believe. I think we should do this more. I think we should do this less. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but it, sure, it certainly might. I'll tell you what's pretty cool. Think about this, and I'm going to, again, talk about this a little bit more uh, after uh, Chris does his deal, is that um, Jared Goff sucked as a, as a rookie in the NFL. He was horrible, right? It was the worst fucking thing ever. He was a bust. That's what everybody said. They hire a new coach, and all of a sudden he's good, all right? What the Rams did that was brilliant, brilliant. Think about this. Jared was in on the interview process of who they were going to hire for the new head coach. He got to sit in the room and meet the guys, talk to the guys, ask them questions, listen to their answers. And from the first day that he met Sean McVay, he wanted McVay to be the coach. He said, he told me, he said, it's a fucking home run. He goes, this, this guy's brilliant, he's smart, this is who I really, he had a couple other guys he liked, but McVay was it. They hire McVay, there's all kinds of shit that I'll talk about later as to how that thing changed, okay? So the opinion of a quarterback to me is important because we're not good without them. You know, and, and it depends on who it is. You know, there's some quarterbacks, I don't want their fucking opinion, you know? They're, they're fucking too stupid, okay? It doesn't mean they're not a great player, but there's nothing they can do to add to it. Make a video of plays that you're really proud of and watch them constantly. Watch yourself. Like, there's some back shoulder throws where he gets fucking killed that are unbelievable. I mean, there's some shit where he's getting destroyed that are unbelievable. Make that, watch that, look in the mirror and go, you know what, you're pretty fucking good, Stockstool. You know, don't, don't be afraid to self-praise yourself every now and then. Don't be afraid to do that, to say good things. And then make a video of the incredibly stupid plays that you made. And he made some of those. Some really stupid plays. Watch them and go, you know what? I ain't never fucking doing that again. I get it. I understand. Every now and then I can take a shot, take a chance <clears throat> on something, but this was just really dumb. And don't repeat those things. Continue to do something good every day of your life for somebody that can never repay you. And, and uh, um, I'll show you a picture here a little bit. Brent had one of the biggest honors that you can have. He was named to the All-State Good Hands team. He got to go to the... Um, um, a game this past week of, uh, was it Clemson and Alabama, right? And New Orleans, and one of just a few college players to get to go because of all the good works that he does in this community. And what I think he can do is also teach that to other people. Set goals so high that only you can imagine them and then make them come true. I am the biggest high goal setter that you could ever imagine, and there's shit that you would laugh at if you saw <clears throat> what I've set for myself. And a lot of it, most of it doesn't have anything to do with football. It's, it's other stuff, you know, that I set goals for. And I do have some really high football goals, and I tell them every year. I start off every year with a PowerPoint, and I tell them I want to be the best offense in the history of college football, ever, in the history. Why not? Is that too big a goal? I don't think it is. Why isn't it? I mean, you know, it's especially now it's year three, okay? Year three, baby. You know, we've got a lot of players that, that – Personally chose and recruited and brought them in here, fit the missing pieces and everything. Why not try to be the best there? Well, that's stupid. Why would you do that? You said that at Cal and you went 1-11. and 11. That's true. Fuck you, okay? I'll say it again. And I'll do it again this year. Because you, if you set goals that are big, then you know what? You usually climb a lot higher than you would if you just set something that, you know, I think I can get my foot in the water there a little bit. So don't be afraid to set goals. Don't be afraid to set big goals.